incremental analysis. Now, the learning objectives for this chapter. We're going to look at the steps involved in management's decision-making process. And we're going to introduce the concept of incremental analysis. And then we're going to apply that. We're going to apply that to whether or not we should accept an order, whether we should make or buy a decision, and other relevant costs involved in repairing, retaining, or replacing equipment, or deciding to eliminate an unprofitable segment or product. To begin with, management's decision-making process. There is no set pattern. However, the steps, the important step is to identify the problem that we are going to analyze. Now, if we have a problem, that means we have at least two alternatives or choices, maybe three. If we don't have any alternatives or choices, we don't have a problem. But because we have a problem, we have a couple of ways to go about solving this problem. So then you determine and evaluate the possible courses of action. You make a decision, you choose one, and then you review that decision with when you get results um, of your decision in the future. Okay. Keep in mind there's both quantitative and qualitative data. That is data that I can measure, financial revenues and costs, profitability. There's also non-financial information that come into play, qualitative data, such as the effect of your decision on employee turnover or the overall company image. Now, a way of going about when we're looking at two alternatives, we have to choose between the alternatives and therefore we identify the financial data that is relevant to the alternatives. Now, financial data is that changes under alternative courses of actions. We're talking both costs and revenues. Sometimes only costs will vary, sometimes only revenues, sometimes both. So for an example here, uh, we have alternative A with revenues 125 and alternative B with revenues of 110. Now what we focus on is what is different between these alternatives. That's what's called incremental analysis. So there's a difference of 15,000. Now they set this up as a bracket, uh, a decrease, or what have you. Then you look at the costs as 100,000 alternative, 80,000 here and they set that up unbracketed. Personally, I would have done the other way around. And uh, so therefore you see that there's a difference in net income of 5,000. So if uh, we produce alternative B, we should have 5,000 more in net income. Now, a couple of definition. Relevant cost. Relevant cost is a future cash flow, cash inflow, cash outflow that is different between the alternatives that I am examining. That's what a relevant cost is. An opportunity cost is not really cost, it's an opportunity to earn revenue and that I don't take, I forego that opportunity to earn revenue and therefore that becomes a cost. A sunk cost is a cost that has happened in the past it's like the Titanic. It's sunk. It's at the bottom of the uh, ocean. You can't recover any of those costs. It's gone forever. Now, how incremental analysis works? Sometimes involves changes that seem contrary to intuition. Yeah, various variable costs sometimes change, but sometimes do not change under the alternative. Fixed costs also, sometimes they change, sometimes they don't change. You have to analyze every situation um, for the relevant costs and revenues at each one of them. You just can't categorize them and say variable costs will change and fixed costs will not. Now we're going to apply incremental analysis to four. Accept an order at a special price. The make or buy decision. We're going to skip this one. And we're going to just look at repair, retain, or replace equipment, or eliminate an unprofitable business segment or product. Now, these are decisions that management have to make on a fairly regular basis. And we'll take them one at a time. And for each one of them, I have done a problem in your textbook. So you can look at Show Me, where I introduce the problem in the page from the textbook, and I go through the solution for accept an order, make or buy, replace equipment, 
or retain a business segment. So you can, for each one of these, you can check the show me folder. Accept an order at a special price. Businesses uh, sometimes, you know, they have their products that they sell in their local market, like here in the UAE. But sometimes a customer comes from another part of the world and wants to buy your product at a special price, one time only, uh, and take it back to their country and sell it. Now, if you're not operating at full capacity, you have the extra capacity to produce this product, what should you do? Well, let's take an example. Sunbelt Company produces 100,000 smoothie blenders per month, which is 80% of their plant capacity. So they have extra capacity. Variable manufacturing costs are $8. Fixed manufacturing costs are $400,000 or $4 per unit because they're doing 80,000 units. Sun, the blenders normally sell directly to retailers at 20. Sunbelt has an offer from Kensington Company, a foreign wholesaler, to purchase an additional 2,000 blenders at $11, not 20. Acceptance of the order would not affect normal sales of the product, and the additional units can be manufactured without increasing plant capacity. What should we do? Well, first of all, the issue is whether or not to accept this order at a special price, whether or not. Uh, I could accept the order as one alternative, I can reject the order. So you define the issue, and you look at your alternatives, reject the order and accept the order. Now, if I reject the order, well, I get Zippo and revenues. If I accept the order, though, I can get 2,000 units at $11. So I'm going to get 22,000. So my revenues will go up 22,000. Costs? Well, if I reject the order, I incur no costs. I don't have to manufacture them. But if I accept the order, I have to manufacture them. So there'd be direct material, direct labor, variable overhead. And therefore, I would incur 16000 And costs will usually bracket it. So the net income then is going to be 6000 if I choose to accept this order. My net income. I don't know what my net income is now, but... After I accept this order, whatever it is, it will go up by 6000 In this case, fixed costs do not change because we already have excess capacity. Therefore, fixed costs are not relevant. The variable manufacturing costs and expected revenues change. Both of those are relevant. Remember, relevant is future cash flows. This is a cash inflow, and this one's a cash outflow. That is different between the alternatives. Okay. Now, another type of decision is the make or buy. And again, I did an example and show me for you. And there's an example in the PowerPoints that I'm not going through, but you can go through. Here we have Baron Company incurs the following annual cost in producing 25,000 ignition switch for motor scooters. Well, they have direct materials, 50,000, direct labor, 75. Variable overhead, uh, 40, fixed overhead, 60. <coughs> so, total cost per unit, 225 divided by 25,000 units, gives me $9 per unit. Now, Baron Company comes along and says, okay, we will sell you those switches at a price of $8 per unit, not 9 Well, what should we do? It sounds like a good deal. This is also uh, an outsourcing decision that many businesses make. Well, again, whether or not to continue manufacturing my product or to stop manufacturing and buy in my product, that's the issue. So my alternative is to continue to manufacture or to buy. Now, if I continue to manufacture, I have 50000 but if I buy, nothing. If I manufacture, I got to pay labor. If I buy, I don't have to pay labor. I stop production. Uh, variable overhead. I don't have that because it varies with production and if I'm not producing then I don't have variable overhead. Okay, but fixed overhead, oh, total manufacturing cost, the absorb at least 50 of the under either option. So you see, if I buy, I will not get rid of all my fixed costs. Okay, I have incremental 10,000 more under the make decision. If I purchase though, it's that. So the total cost is 250000 here. 
and therefore the difference between the make and the buy is 25,000. So I would continue to manufacture. There's an opportunity cost here. Let's assume if I stop manufacturing, I have an empty space and I can therefore use that empty space to earn revenue. Well, if that's the case, then in this case, we can generate 38,000 in additional income for producing a different product. Well, then that becomes relevant because it's under the make alternative. Uh, if I continue to make, I forego the opportunity of earning this revenue. Therefore, it becomes a part of the cost of manufacturing. You understand what we're talking about? So now the alternative to buy looks a little better because if I buy, then I pay the 250 and then I earn 38,000. So uh, it's a lot better that way. Another type is to replace equipment or retain it. Jeff Coke Company is considering replacing a factory machine with a new machine. Jeff Coke Company has a factory machine that originally cost 110. Well, that's originally. Keep in mind we're looking at future cash flows. What it cost in the past? Irrelevant. It has a balance and accumulated depreciation of 70,000, so its book value is 40. All of that is irrelevant. It has four years left. That's good. The company is considering replacing this machine with a new machine. A new machine, it costs 120. Now that's a future cost. Expect to have zero salvage value at the end of four years. If the new machine is acquired, variable manufacturing is expected to decrease from 160 to, oh, whatever that was, there's a mistake here. And the old unit could be sold for 5,000. The incremental amounts for the four period is this. Variable manufacturing costs, okay, went down from 640 to 500. If I buy the new machine, I uh, have to pay 120,000. If I sell the old machine for 5,000, so the cost of this alternative, we are better off to replace that machine. Okay. Now, other considerations. The book value of the old machine is irrelevant. The book value is a sunk cost. Costs which cannot be changed by future decisions are sunk costs. However, if I do sell that product, if I choose the one alternative to replace the machine, then the cost of disposing or the allowance I get for trading in the old machine is relevant. Now, another type is to eliminate an unprofitable segment. Here, again, we focus on relevant costs, consider different product lines, or we can consider it in terms of a division. For example, here we have, this time, product lines. We have three product lines, Pro, Master, and Champ. Now, here's our total income statement over here for all three. But we can break out the revenue as how much was Pro, Masters, and Champ. We can break out the variable costs. We can come up with a contribution margin, and we can assign these fixed costs to these three just to see how profitable. And it turns out that Champ is not profitable. And, but we are overall profitable by 220. So it looks like if we get rid of Champ like that, our profit should go up by 20 because it's dragging us down by 20. All right, let's analyze. If we just go with Pro and Master, then we have the sales of Pro and Master. We'll have the variable costs of Pro and Master and the contribution margin. However, the fixed costs now are fixed. There's still 160, so I have to divide. Instead of dividing that 160 with three products, I'm dividing it by two products. And therefore, the total increase or the total income will go down by 10,000 if I eliminate that. And again, there's another example in the PowerPoints for you. You can go through that, the do it exercise. And I also created four show me so that you can check on those under the folder called show me. Okay, and that's that. Thank you. Shift F.